Hey, it's Scott Brown with Connie and Dick Service Center, and I'm shooting a, a video here that I want to try to chronicalize uh, some challenges that we had getting uh, proper parts, uh, proper replacement parts. I'm, I'm not trying to pick on anybody, I'm just trying to show some uh, challenges that we have run into. And what I'm working on here is a really clean 1987 Ford Bronco. Uh, five liter. This is a Neek 4 vehicle and um, basically what happened here is that this vehicle uh, was brought in for intermittent installing complaint and it uh, we ran uh, diagnostics on it and it had a continuous code 14 which is a PIP signal and if we go over to the computer here and we go to service information and we look at what the spout PIP and spout is. So PIP is basically our like crankshaft reference signal it goes to the PCM and then we have spark output. Uh, that is the timing modifier signal that goes to the ignition module. And of course the ignition module has control on, uh, controls the primary circuit on the, the coil uh, to control spark. So we ran a few checks. I looked at the PIP signal and it looked okay on the scope, but uh, the car is an 87, it's got, um, I don't know, well over 100,000 miles on it. So I had fortunately had a new distributor, I had a new fa factory Ford distributor, and we opted to replace it. And the new Ford distributor does not come with an ignition module. So we ordered up a Motorcraft ignition module, and this is the module that we received, and put it in the car. Ran it, drove it quite a ways, uh, gave it back to the customer. Customer brings it back, says it's stalling intermittently. So um, we start looking at it and um, we can, I scoped it and we could see that the, the spout signal was reaching the module and the module was stop, stopping. So I ordered another module, um, standard here, put it in and it was like clockwork. It, it would shut off. Uh, immediately. Uh, you start it up, run it for a while, shut right off. And what I did, you know, I had it, had it hooked up on the scope and here's, here's our channels here. I just want to kind of go over this. Uh, we've got PIP up here in the top. This is our spout, channel B. Uh, C is our primary ignition. And then D, we're looking at uh, current, current on the uh, primary oil here. It's about six amps, six and a half amps or so. And this is all, this is normal. This, I ended up having to put the original module back in the car. Um, the original module, I'm going to, uh, let's see, get my flashlight out. Show you that the only reason I elected to replace the module is because somebody had pried on that module at some point uh, and they had damaged it on the outside. But uh, put, put the old module back in and it's been running fine uh, for quite some time. So what we ended up doing is we went to eBay and found some new old stock and this is the part that we got. Now we used to stock these DY425A. Uh, I looked in all of my boxes here. I couldn't find anything. So we get this one from eBay. I'm looking at this thing. It looks, it looks, you know, looks authentic. Looks like a decent part, but I can look in those screw holes and I can see that it's actually been mounted on the car. So what I wanted to do in this experiment here is I'm going to go ahead and reinstall this Ford Motorcraft replacement module. This is the one you you can get from your Ford dealer or from your warehouse distributor. And I want to run the car and I want to show you on the scope what is likely to happen. And if we go, I'm going to stop the scope here. And one of the, a couple of the things that I noticed was the control circuit on the primary. Okay. And so we're going to just zoom in here on the primary and uh, we'll have a look. You see the turn on and off there? Look at that, we zoom in, that, that looks pretty clean. That looks like a nice clean switch. So that's where part of the work is taking place. Um, 
The other section that's doing work is this current limiting section. You see that there? Uh, current limiting, looks like it's regulating that. It's pulling the voltage down to about uh, 9.8 volts. And I'll pull this cursor down so we can see. There's our open uh, charging voltage, right? And then if we look at our switch here, where we release and let the coil fire, you see that that's a pretty nice clean switch there, okay? So we're gonna zoom back out. So I wanna show you that this car, <clears throat> when we put the other modules in, you'll see that there's definitely a signature change here, the, the way that the control circuits are working. And so that could be a telltale sign for you uh, if you're replacing a component. Um, you'll wanna kinda check that out and make sure that you know how to make it work. The other discovery that I made is that if I take the spout connector out so that the vehicle is just running in base timing, there's no complex uh, work taking place inside the ignition module, the car will continue to run and run and run. And so right now this car has been idling here for probably about 10 minutes or so. And usually it would stall within, you know, within five minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the camera here. I'm going to go swap this module out and then um, we'll connect back up here and uh, carry on. Okay, we're back. I now have the, the original uh, module removed from the, the, uh, the module, or removed from the distributor. I've installed the DY420, uh, let's see, DY 1284 uh, that we sourced from our Motorcraft distributor. If we look at our distributor, down here, you can see that's what we've got in the vehicle. Spout connectors in, I have the timing set, and we're gonna set up our scope to go ahead and run here. Put our trigger back on to auto on A, and I'm gonna have it switch about right there. Okay, all right, so let's start the vehicle, and we'll see how long it'll run for. shut off immediately. So I'm going to stop the scope. We'll take a look at the waveforms here. See if I can see what happened. And it looks like my red channel, which is, which is my spout. I don't have, I must have fallen out of my connector. Let's fix that and see if we can get the car fired up. Um, situations like this, how, what I'll do, let me just set the scope up for five seconds per division. Let it start, run, and that way we've got plenty of time on the scope. Turn the key off. All right. It's running, doesn't look like I've got channel B. Oh no, it's working, okay. All right, so we'll just sit here and wait for something to happen. And hopefully it's not gonna make a liar out of me and uh, never stall, but uh, confidence is high, it's gonna quit. Let it run here for a little bit. See what happens. I guess while, while we're waiting for it to quit, what we'll do is we'll go back to our, say two milliseconds per division. Let's take a look. Let's just stop it for a second here. Let's just take a look at our switch here. Look at that, okay? So there's, there's a problem right there. There's our primary switch element go back to one to one and then we're going to take a look at our current limiting section look at our current limiter look at that goofy waviness there that's uh that's not what we saw on the old on the uh original 
stuff. But look at that switch. You can see that's where the work is taking place. And it's uh, just not, not doing the same. So this vehicle is still running. I'm gonna go back to five seconds per division, just let it sit here and run. And uh, we'll wait for it to stall so we can see what uh, what's happening. A couple of other things to note here is that um, when we did have it stalling, uh, in fact, let's just look up a uh, one that I saved before. I'll just open up a file here. Oh, there it is. It just stalled. Yeah, I'm going to go back to our scope. Unfortunately, <laughs> looks like what we've got going on here is that, see, we still had a pip signal coming across, um, but uh, I didn't, didn't see the spout, looked like the spout signal. Unfortunately, it, it went off the screen. Now, if I go, if I try to restart this vehicle, keys in the run position, I'm going to go ahead and crank it, and I'm going to push my red probe back in there, make sure it didn't fall out. And if we try to crank it right now, it will not start. You see what's on the scope here? You can see that we definitely have a pip and spout coming out, but no start. So what I did find is that if you cycle the key, it will start. And I thought, well, maybe there's something going on with the computer system. There we go, it started right up. It will run. But uh, so what I did to prove this out is that when it stalled once, uh, I went ahead and just basically unplugged the TFI module, plugged it back in, and then went to the crank position and it fired right up. So basically it's, it's stalling, the module's failing, and we're removing power and restarting the module to get it to come back up online. And uh, away we go. So um, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and install the uh, other module, the standard module here. We're gonna install that one. Oh, there we go. There's our stall. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the scope. Let's look and see what we have. Zoom in, okay. So there's our primary, primary current, and you know, nothing out of the ordinary in the primary current. And then we had pip and spout commands going to, you know, coming out of the module and then going back to the module. It just stopped firing the uh, primary. So definitely have an ignition problem. It's not getting overloaded uh, due to primary current control. Now, what I did find, uh, as I mentioned earlier, if I unplug the spout connector, this vehicle will continue to just run, run and run and run. So that's another test that you could possibly, uh, you know, experiment with if, if you're ever faced with a challenge like this. So we'll go ahead and swap out to the next module and uh, take a look at, at what we got. Um, let's just take a quick look right at the very end here. It's last, last firing event. Let's look and see what that distributor switch looks like all right kind of ugly not not real not real clean and then if we slide this over come on sometimes this thing is uh, just not i got my hand there right see <laughs> go back let's look at our current limiting you can see there's a lot going on there it's it's, it's just the, the control circuit for current limiting just as a little a little bizarre. The switch off, uh, that looks pretty clean. So, all right, so I'll unplug here and then we'll reconvene with the other module. Okay, we're back. 
we're gonna we've got our standard module installed there's our forward replacement unit still haven't tried our other unit yet but this is what's in there now lx218 we'll take a look you can see it right down in there okay and uh, we do have our timing is now set pulled the spout connector out 10 degrees and we're going to go ahead and fire it away here all right vehicle started ran oh, and it stalled immediately let's look and see what we got take a take a look in here Close our waveform panel. Yep, there we go. No more, <laughs> no output. Let's just take a look at our primary control. Yuck, look at that. Just uh, terrible, right? And let's take a look at our current limiting. What does that look like? So, yep, we can see there's definitely some current limiting going on there. Does look a little goofy. Let's go back here, zoom in a little bit further. Yeah, so it's a little bit different than the uh, Motorcraft module. Uh, a lot going on in here. If we zoom way in, yeah, you can see all the switching that's going on here. We're, we're at a decent sample rate, uh, 1.25 mega samples per second. All right, so. Clearly, um, this, this module is not doing its thing, right? We can all agree we're receiving our commands to fire the module and no activity. So we will go ahead and proceed to install this guy. And I'm hoping that this is gonna put the vehicle back in service and, and give us the same amount of service life we got out of this. This has actually got the same part numbers uh, a little bit different on this bottom piece here, but uh, I have high confidence that this is going to work, but I have not seen this run yet in the vehicle. So we'll go ahead and swap that guy out and uh, get it back up on running here in just a second. I'll be right back. Okay, last module is in. We've installed the new old stock DY425A. Look at that. Even came with... The dielectric grease but i use my use my new stuff and the instruction sheet which has a date of 8 of 85 okay so uh just to prove out that we have that part installed you can see it right down in here this is our new replacement module i've got the timing set back right to 10 degrees and we're, we've got the scope running, and we're going to go ahead and start it. All right, vehicle's running, and we'll see how long it runs for. Hopefully it'll just run forever. But uh, first thing we'll do, we'll just go ahead and stop the scope here, and let's just take a look at our, our primary control zoom in here there's our primary let's look at our switch oh look at that nice and pretty right so I think you'll all agree with that go back and look at our let's look at our current limiting control oh look at that pretty nice current limiting control there don't have that crazy it's it's got a really nice control circuit see that's just pretty much flat stable we're not seeing all that AC uh, there all right so we're back I'll just hit uh, just hit sit here and let it run but um, I, I have high confidence that it's not going to fail but uh, you know this is we're, we're in California so we get vehicles that live long lives and uh you know this is not not the norm but we've got to be able to put our customers back on the road um in fact this module here i'm going to give this to the customer and have him save it 
Uh, if we ever run into a problem where the module, this module we put in fails, uh, we've got a backup. We know it'll run. But these replacement units, I have no clue where these are being made. I, you know, I doubt uh, the original vendor that made these for, for Ford back in the day are even around anymore. I'm looking at our box here. It says majority of the contents made in the USA. So you can see that majority of the content. So, but obviously there's no good, you know, electronic controls. And then the standard, standard brand, you know, I mean, normally we get decent quality. This says made in the USA on it. But um, again, the electronic controls uh, inside are just not, not there. So, um, so I hope that you uh, got something out of this video. Um, if you're ever in question and you're, you're you know, replacing a component on a vehicle and you want to know if it's worthy, um, it might be worth you know throwing the scope on it to take a look at uh, look at these values here to see what uh, what it looks like here. We'll go ahead and zoom in on this, uh, take a look and see what our circuits look like. Uh, put a little more time on the screen here. So, yep, there it is. So you can see just a little more background here. This is our this is our spout output, right? So this rising signal or this rising uh, edge here, that would be our reference point, of course, and that currently is representing uh, 10 degrees before top dead center. So we are moving the timing, the, the computer's bouncing the timing forward or advancing it forward and um, you know, giving us some spark advance. If we pull the spout signal out on this vehicle, pull it out, and you'll see what happens on the scope. And happen to be on the right side of the circuit. You'll now see that the primary is basically firing right there on that edge, that rising edge, right? So, so now, and that's, that's 10 degrees before TDC. So, um, so you know, that's Ford's uh, spark, spark timing control system. I remember working on lots of these way back in the day, but uh, we don't see these very often. But uh, try to do this one-handed here. A little challenging. Well, my test probe, my back probe is all the way through the. You'll hear the engine speed up too, right? So we move that spark ahead, move that peak cylinder pressure in the sweet spot, speed the engine up a little bit, make it run. So if, um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them below. I'd love to hear uh, any thoughts on this, but um, I have now high confidence that we'll be able to put this vehicle back on the road uh, for our customer, and it'll continue to give him many miles of, uh, of service. So, all right, thanks again for watching. Take care.